Central African Republic. Why would a landlocked country in the middle of Africa draw so much attention from other African countries as well as Europe and the United States? The Central African Republic, with a population of just over four and a half million people, is now witnessing violence between its residents and an overall lack of security. International troops from the African Union and France are present on the ground, though not being very proactive in trying to stop the violence. This country on paper gained independence from France in 1960, but the fact on the ground is that its people have continued to be impoverished in this mineral-rich land, and the French and other foreigners have continued to exploit this land filled with oil, gold, and uranium. As the conflict in the CAR is being presented as solely a sectarian one, in reality it has been set up to show just that, where in reality it is a continuation of the colonialists' usurpation of the African continent at the expense of the natives. The reason international troops are on the ground is not to ensure the people's safety, but to ensure the safety of the natural resources and their extraction from the land there. The failure of the state of the Central African Republic is one which is repeated throughout the African continent. Since these countries reached independence in the late 1950s or 60s, they have continued to witness plot and counterplot to ensure that the natives of this resource-rich continent do not reap the benefits of their own land and that the colonial powers, though on paper these countries gain independence, continued to reap the profits of this land. So the situation that we are now witnessing in the CAR's roots are not so much sectarian but greed. The roots are the former colonizers, such as France's desire to control the wealth while more and more of the natives continue to struggle to survive. In any country, it is not difficult for the elite, whether from inside or from outside the country, to create scenarios which will entangle the masses. For example, in the Central African Republic, Muslims and Christians have been living on side of each other for centuries. There have been intermarrying for all of this time, and they have been living side by side with each other with very few problems. And now suddenly people are harming one another, burning one another, and even eating each other. Why? Because the problem in the country is being portrayed as a sectarian one. The group, the Salakas, which just happen to be mostly Muslim, and the group, the Balakas, which happen to be Christian, are actually involved in a power struggle. Their goal is to have political control. However, the actual players are neither group, but foreigners who want to control and have readily access to the natural resources of the Central African Republic. Gold, uranium, and oil are definitely resources which wars have been and will be fought over. France, the former colonial ruler of this land, must have the uranium of the CAR. Otherwise, the French, who are already in trouble economically at home, would be under more pressure. France depends on uranium for its energy. 70% of France's energy is nuclear power. And in order to have that nuclear power, it must have uranium. Thus, it is very important that the uranium on the CAR and other places be readily available and can be acquired cheaply. In order for the French to take the uranium at a minimum cost, the quality of life for those who work in uranium mines must be substandard and they not be paid in actuality for the difficulty of their work. Thus, the quality of life of the natives is simply on survival mode. Very minimal, while the goal for the French is for greater profits and a higher standard of life for their own. So the reality of the Central African Republic is a war for extracting and controlling resources. What needs to be addressed in the Central African Republic, as in so many African nations, is for how long will the so-called international community sit silent as the resources of this rich continent continue to be exploited by the Europeans, the Americans, and others. We see time and time again that Africans are either shown as starving or simply savages who want to kill each other for no reason. However, the reality of it all is that the reason why some Africans are starving is because their wealth is being stolen from them and they are left with nothing. 
And the reason why there is so much conflict on this continent is because of the control and interference of the hegemonic colonialistic powers and their will to create chaos while stealing, usurping, and raping the continent of Africa. That is a real challenge for the CAR and for so many other countries. You claim, CAR, that you were independent from France in 1960, but Paris and others made sure that you would not really be independent. What the CAR needs, as so many other African countries, is to be able to choose its own destiny and to control its own resources and to have leaders that really work for the interests of its own people instead of for the interests of colonialistic powers, be it from the East or West. The roots of these conflicts in the African continent lie more in Europe and the United States than Africa. But it must be left up to the African people themselves to resolve this because if they are waiting for the so-called international community to come with a solution, that would be an oxymoron. You cannot expect those who benefit from the chaos there to be the ones to come up with a solution to end the madness. Africans must stand up and say enough exploitation, enough lies, enough African lives given so others can have a high quality life. With cheaper oil, nice gold and affordable energy, it is the turn of the African themselves to reap the benefits of this very wealthy land which has been given to them.